Dr. Mike Martino joins us today, and we're talking health and human performance on GC Conversations. Hello, and welcome to GC Conversations, the show where each week we bring in faculty, staff, alumni, and friends, and we talk all things Georgia College and this community. I'm your host, Wendell Staten. Thank you for joining us today on NBC TV4 right here in our Georgia College Television Studios, and also we're simulcast on WRGC 88.3 FM, our NPR station right here on campus. So, got a special treat for you today. We're joined by Dr. Mike Martino, Professor of Exercise Science, and a bunch of other things. Good to see you. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and those other things we talked about. So, uh, you're also the Exercise Science Program Coordinator, I believe. Yeah, I'm the Graduate Coordinator also, also the uh, Lab Director. Okay. So, um, we do do some, you know, extensive types of research that we do in the lab here and we use the, a lot yeah. of the athletes as you know some of our subjects you know depending on what studies we're actually doing i think to uh, date uh, in the department of kinesiology and and all actually on campus we're the only lab that does blood work okay so huh. um we do look at you know some markers uh blood lactate looking at excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. Right. Some of the things you know, associated with exercise and some of the effects that right. exercise training has. So. Now, and that's what I want to talk about today. Really, I just really want to dive into health and human performance. I'm sure. just fascinated by it. Yep. And it's, uh, um, it's come a long way. It has. And, and I look at, you know, you go back 20, 30 years ago, and, it, and, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of branching off here, but when, it, when you talk about funding, everybody wants to fund, you know, the, the uh, uh, textbooks, reading, writing, arithmetic, but yet over this process, we ended up with an obesity issue in our country because Absolutely. I think we ignored that. Yep. And that's a, that, that's a whole other show that we could talk about. But, sure. Uh, <laughs> but, but let, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's directly tied to yeah. it. I mean, you know, my field of exercise physiology actually um, stemmed from physical education. Right. Uh, and now it's just a science-based, right. you know, instead of it being like what people call gym class, you know, and really what happened is over the years, physical education evolved from something where it was an organized, you know, form of pedagogy right. to where you were teaching skills and motor skills to kids. Now it's, you know, roll the ball out, but it's actually coming back. And now we're, we're starting to see that those things are changing. There are curriculums, you know, there are anatomy lessons that you actually learn. There are biomechanics lessons that you actually learn. Well, those same exact concepts are actually applied to athletics. To you know, training athletes. You know, it's funny as you, you were talking about motor skill development. And you're right. I guess the, and everything, you know, comes back around full circle. Sure. But, 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 but movement. I remember doing juggling classes as a as a, as a child. Yep. Uh, very basic footwork classes, yep. dance, all those types of things. Absolutely. That you know you don't realize at the time, but essentially that's teaching me those motor skills, gross motor skills, fine motor skills, all that. And, and and you're all right. I think at some point we kind of lost it probably as a, as a as an education society. Sure. And then now I think we're coming back. Absolutely. I mean, I know strength coaches all over the country. Um, Ethan Reeves is a good example at Wake Forest. He's got some of his football players doing tumbling. Right. I mean, yeah. they're doing basic tumbling skills. I mean, I was watching a show on TV last night. Um, George St. Pierre, who's the UFC welterweight champion, he actually was doing gymnastics movements getting ready for his next fight. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, these basic concepts of, you know, fundamental movement patterns are coming back, yeah. you know. And I'm, I'm so glad that, that this emphasis is coming back and that it, and that, uh, uh, I, I just, I'm, I'm fascinated by health and human performance. So let, let's kind of talk about that. How did you get involved in this? I mean, uh, from day one or right. college? Uh, tell me a little bit about Mike Martino and getting to this stage of this interest in this academic area. Sure. I, um, I was a competitive swimmer growing up. Okay. Started, you know, all the way when I was eight years old. Uh, lived in New Jersey, went to school high school at St. Joseph's High School in New Jersey, and it was actually a nationally ranked high school swimming team. Okay. Um, now, so you, you up in the morning in the pool before oh, dawn, all that oh, kind yeah. of thing? I, I literally, because the way that our school started, we had to be at school by 8 o'clock right. there in class. So what we had to do, we used a YMCA. It was Metuchen YMCA in New Jersey. And literally, I had to get up at 345 because it took wow. about 35 minutes to get to the pool from where I lived in South Plainfield. Um, but we had to be in the water by 4.45. Okay. And then we were done with practice by 6.30, 6.45. Then we had to take showers, eat breakfast, and right. then make sure we got over to school. 
And then, and then the pool was still another 10 to 15 minutes from St. Joe's. Okay. So yeah, so, I mean, not, I, not, not a lot, not a lot of uh, late school nights for you. No, I, I, I would be up studying, and I mean, it was a challenging school. Sure. So, you know, I was up, you know, studying until ten or eleven yeah. at night, and then I was in bed because I had to get up at three forty-five. Wow. Okay. So, right. you know, my parents liked it when I could drive because exactly. then they didn't have to. You know, they didn't have to take me to practice, but um, you know, up there it was 17, so it took longer. But that whole thing actually is what guided me towards human performance. Right. Um, you know, I was an athlete, so you know, back then we didn't really know very much. Right. I mean, we lifted weights, but there was no meaning yes. to why we lifted the weights the way that we lifted them. I mean. To this day, people still use traditional kind of bodybuilder approaches where they do isolation. That's really gone away. Yeah. We really don't use that much anymore. We do a lot more of total body closed kinetic chain movements. I mean, every single athlete on Georgia College's campus now gets assessed using the functional movement screen, right. which is a basic test, seven test screen that looks at um, fundamental movement patterns. And we look for asymmetries and dysfunction. And then once we assess that and we find those, we then design their actual program based on that and we try to actually minimize and get rid of those asymmetries. So that way we either increase the longevity of their career, right. which pro baseball and pro football are actually incorporating this now. Mm -hmm. you know, so you're going to see more and more of it. Which, but we're doing it here already. Which, which you, you're leading me to a great thought of the old days. It was, all right, three sets of 10 on the bench and – Three sets to tell the squat and get out. That, that's kind of what you were talking about. This that's right. big view, uh, uh, and now everything is is much more. Uh, 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 it's just better. How about yeah, that? It's, you know? it's just specific. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're taking each athlete instead of training a team as a team in a weight room. Right. I mean, that's really not effective anymore. Yeah. You know, you're playing together as a team, so you're building your, you know, you know team spirit and right. whatever else you want to say. But when we're working in a weight room and in conditioning, we want to take your weaknesses and turn those into strengths. Right. Not everybody has the same strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. So how are you training everybody the same way? Yeah. Well, that's, that's a great thought. I, I remember, you know, again, uh, I remember some of my teammates, all they want to do was bench press, you know, right. and uh, have the have the big arms, the big chest, whatever. But but yet that really wasn't helping us for our sports specific no. areas. No. And it certainly wasn't working on a weakness because one of my buddies, uh, you know, uh, could have been on a magazine uh, with his upper body, but his but his uh, his lower body, he really didn't pay attention sure. to, and therefore impacted him in his career. And and absolutely, the funny thing about that is, from a basic biomechanics perspective. He's actually shifting his center of mass or center of gravity up. Yeah. He's increasing his lean body mass upstairs while his lower body, he's not. Right. So that means your center of gravity is going to shift from around your belly button up, which now means you're less stable. Yeah. So if you look at a yeah. lot of pro baseball players, I mean, they have huge legs and huge glutes. I mean, they're, right. they're big. They're lower body oriented. Most sports are ground-based sports. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I'll tell you what. We're up against a break. And folks, I don't know how in the world we're going to get in three segments because this is very, this is interesting at a fast pace, <laughs> and, and I want about six segments today. But uh, we'll be right back with Mike Martino on GC Conversations. You must be your fairy godmother. It doesn't take a fairy godmother to tell you that the right fit means everything, especially when it comes to car seats. Always choose one that's the right fit for your child's age and size. Oh, that does make a difference. <laughs> Remember, their happily ever afters are in your hands. To find out more, visit safercar.gov slash the right seat. Jimmy can't sing. And Tommy can't dance. So we're, we're gonna, gonna put, put some ants in their pants. Aww, and walk like a monkey. <laughs> hop like a bunny. <laughs> One more time. Jimmy can't sing. And Tommy can't dance. So we're going to put some ants in their pants. Kids will spend 22 minutes watching us, the super duper party troopers, sing about ants in their pants. Isn't that funny? Ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants, they got ants in their pants, they got Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, 
twice a day. They have the time. Hello, welcome back to GC Conversations. Again, I'm your host, Wendell Staten, with Dr. Mike Martino. And uh, Mike, we just left off talking about, uh, uh, again, just this whole fascination with exercise science. Sure. And, and I absolutely love it. And uh, uh, let, let's go back a little bit. My, I, I want to go back into your swimming experience and kind of sure. take me up through college and how you got into this. So you swam in high school. Yep, swam in high school and then uh, got a college scholarship to Furman University, okay. which was a liberal arts college, kind of. Okay. That was one of the things that attracted me to Georgia College, you know, when I came here from Southern right. Miss. Uh, when I finished my PhD at Alabama, where I was an assistant coach, um, and actually the head coach for the sprinters. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I, I looked at Georgia College, and I was like, hey, this is a pretty nice school. So I had an opportunity back then and to work in conjunction with uh, the hospital, the local hospital, um, you know, kind of did some stuff with them, tried to work on developing a wellness plan for the whole community and, right. and possibly a facility. It didn't work out, right. but you know, then Bodyplex came right. in okay. the picture and now, right. now at least I own it okay. so I can make yeah. the decisions. <laughs> but you know, it goes all the way back to what I did in high school gave me the opportunity to actually go to college. Right. So um, I enjoyed Furman, it was you know, challenging academically, um, but I think it prepared me to do my graduate work but that's where I got exposed. And I had a mentor there, Dr. Tony Catarazzano, who is actually an exercise physiologist. And he started teaching me all about weightlifting and resistance training, plyometrics. So then I started learning about that and I started using it on myself. Then I started training other teams at Furman as an okay. undergraduate. Okay. Um, so then we just started developing the programs and I started learning more and more about just human performance. It was, was your undergraduate major in this area? Yeah, it okay. was actually, back then it was called uh, health and physical education. Right. And now they have, it's health and exercise science at right. Furman. Yeah. But, um, and that's where exercise science kind of, you know, kind of evolved from. And now human performance is evolving from exercise science, exercise right. physiology, yeah. which is looking specifically at, you know, the fundamental um, performance of the human body. Right. How can you make the human body jump higher, run faster, swim faster, right. you know, hit harder? Right. All of those factors, you know, come well, into play. So you, you, you're, you're at Furby, you're swimming there, yep. and then uh, you, you, you decide to uh, go to grad school immediately after? Yeah, well, I mean, I swam at Furman and I developed. You okay. know, I, I got a scholarship there, I came in. I, was, I would say I was pretty good, okay. but I wasn't ranked gotcha. in the world. Right. By the time I finished, I was ranked top 200 in the world. Okay, okay. Um, and, you know, I, I just developed, I learned more and more. And right. I, I just basically started to actually bring that stuff into, from the weight room into the pool. So I started seeing how I could transition and make the strength gains and the, the power improvement outside the pool and then transition it over into okay. yeah. the pool. So then I did that and then I started learning more and more. And I was like, you know, maybe exercise physiology because I started as pre-med. Okay. And then... Dr. Catarazzano kind of exposed me to this, and I was like, hey, "This is this is really interesting." And from there, that's how you know it led to me, you know, going back and going to grad school. Okay, grad school was at uh, University Alabama. of Alabama. Okay, all right. And again, at exercise more national science championships or? in football than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exercise science area. Again. Yeah, it was exercise uh, physiology there. Okay. Um, yeah. I had minors in uh, molecular biology, statistics. Uh, Nutrition right. and health education, health promotion. Right. Yeah, I want to. I'm glad you mentioned nutrition there, because that's another area uh, that 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 we see more and more, even from government labels on, your, yeah. on what you eat and all that type of thing. Maybe. Yeah, it's nutrition has changed big time. Yeah. I mean, you know, what we used to think is just eat, you know, high carbohydrate meals, yeah. and then we started coming out with the refined carbohydrates and fast food restaurants. You know, when we were growing up, we didn't have as many fast food restaurants. Correct. But there's a direct correlation, you know, between, you know, obesity and fast food consumption. Yeah, right. I mean, high calorie options, you know, um, not nutrient dense foods. Yeah. So, I mean. You know, that's one of my issues with that. If you look at uh, the lower cost foods are those as opposed to the healthier foods typically cost a little bit more. Uh, fruits, vegetables, what have you. you yeah, know, and, and you just have to be smart, yeah. you know. I yeah. mean, and athletes need to be smart because... I, t I use an analogy, you know, with the athletes when I talk to them about nutrition. I was like, do you consider your body, um, you know, a beat-up old Volkswagen or a Lamborghini? Right, yeah. You know, 
if you drive down to the gas station, are you going to put 87 unleaded into, you know, a million dollar Lamborghini? Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. Car, you know, will ping or knock, do whatever. You're going to put high quality, you know, gas in yeah. it. So same thing. Your body is just like a Lamborghini. Yeah. You want to put high quality foods. That's the old adage of you are what you eat. That's exactly that's, that's right. That's true. <laughs> that, is, that is the truth. Yep. So, uh, so then you go to Southern Miss. Yep. Uh, that, was my fir- that was my first teaching position. Okay. Was at Southern Miss. Um, I went there, and that's actually where I met Dr. Gangstead, who's the dean of the College of Health oh, Sciences here. Okay. So um, it's strange that we ended up you yeah. know, on the same team again. Okay. But yeah. uh, I went to Southern Miss, and actually I got involved with the human performance program there and actually working with – you know, the strength coach there at the right. time. Okay. Um, and Southern Miss was a, a good example of a Division One school that didn't have a lot of money, but they were actually top 25 in football. Right. And they've continued, you know, to be a right. pretty good program. Um, and all of their sports were pretty good, but football was, like, one of their best right. sports. Yeah. And you've been at Georgia College approximately how long 15 now? 15 years. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> all right. Well, good, yeah. So um, – well, let's, let's let's go into a little bit more about. Um, I, I kind of want to talk about your involvement, uh, particularly with our student athletes here at Georgia sure. College, because I think it's just a great program and a great concept of. Uh, it's kind of one of those win wins for everybody. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and and essentially, um, you know, I, I came to you a while back and said, "Here's kind of what we're looking for. What can you do?" He said, "We can do it now." You yeah. know, and so so, but but the big thing is your students, literally use the student athletes here as a lab and, and vice sense. versa. You in know what I'm saying? And, and yep. it, it is just absolute hands-on experience. And then our student athletes are getting this individual attention that they would never get anywhere else. Absolutely. Maybe kind of just give us the big view of this. Okay. Um, you know, 15 years ago when I came here, uh, you know, when you're the new guy on the block, you just you kind of have to earn respect. So I remember when Coach Sellers was here, you know, for the first probably two years, I would go and watch practice and I'd kind of see what they were doing and kind of watch them a little bit in the weight room. And Coach Sellers came up to me. He was just like, well, you know, introduced myself to him. And right. he said, well, what do you think? You know, and I said, well, you know, I, I would probably make these recommendations. He was like, interesting. Yeah. So then he would start coming to my office, then all the coaches. Then right, I just yeah. started meeting with all the coaches. Yeah. And then that's slowly how it started. Yeah. Started talking a little bit about performance, let them know my background, being an Olympic coach. Right. You know, it wasn't that I was just a scientist. I was an athlete. Then I became an Olympic coach, right. you know, coached, you know, multiple you know medal holders right. i'd coached athletes all over the you know world gotten to travel to russia to cuba you know i mean all over yeah. the place spain i mean you name it but um but then i think they started to understand that hey this guy could help us yeah. so then what i started to do and i knew back then what the vision was was to actually integrate our undergraduate program with our athletics program yeah. actually being able to use our students and what they're learning here in the classroom, and then can they actually put it, you know, together with the sports teams yeah. in the field? You know, and, and the organization that I am, a, you know, the regional coordinator and SPD committee chair of this entire program that the National Strength and Conditioning Association, um, which is the leading authority on, you know, resistance training and right. human performance in the world, uh, you know, our basic mission statement is revolves around bridging the gap yeah. between science and application. Right. And that's what we're doing here at Georgia College. We're, gonna, we're up against the breaks. So I want to come back and pick Absolutely. up on this topic. So again, with Mike Martino, I'm Wendell State, and we'll be right back on GC Conversations. Really? Buzz, what's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just, I, there was a, I had, just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point there, smoke key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. It's not his new group of friends. It's not the video games. It's not the neighborhood. Mom, do I have to go to school today? The biggest threat to your child's future could be you. 
Every day they miss, even in middle school, puts their graduation at risk. Hello, and welcome back to GC Conversations for our last segment with Dr. Mike Martino. And Mike, we, we, we left off with talking about the application process of the students in science and application. Uh, again, just let's pick up right there, uh, this hands-on experience that our students are getting. Sure. I mean, it's a great thing that you know, we established the relationships with the coaches back then because now we work very closely with athletics. It's a perfect scenario, yeah. you know. I mean, not a lot of institutions do this. But we're very creative in that we work closely with the coaches. We offer things to the teams. Um, you know, probably two or three years ago, uh, we, we had every single um, golf team member right. had their own personal trainer. Yeah, that's unbelievable. I mean, yeah, they I all have. have their own personal trainer. Yeah. So, I mean, those are the kinds of things that we're doing. So it's a win-win. You yeah. know, athletics actually gets exposed to some of the latest things that are occurring in human performance. Plus, then our students are actually getting exposure by working with athletes. Right. And then, you know, late, earlier this year, we've actually added a, a strength and conditioning GA. Right. Because, you know, we're at a Division II school. We probably don't have the funds that a right. Division I school has. Right. We can't actually have a head strength coach, right. you know. This was a creative way, and now what we do is we take the undergraduate students, they work with the GAs from the teams, who are actually, a lot of them, the majority of them, are in our human performance graduate right. degree, which is a new degree. We didn't even have that. Okay. So that evolved over yeah. the years. Um, so now what happens is we have our undergraduate students working with our graduate students, who then our graduate students work with the coaches, right. and then the coaches obviously answer yeah. to you. Yeah. So, you know, we really kind of are using all resources in a team manner to make us, you know, the best team that we could possibly be. And remember, we did win two Commissioner right. Cups That's in right. a row. That's right. And, you know, Georgia College probably shouldn't win the Commissioner's right. Cup <laughs> when you look at how, you know, right. stringent our right. academic, yeah. you know, standards are in comparison. And, you know, it's a lot harder to get into school here. Not to, right. you know, say anything about right. the Peach yeah. Belt schools, but it's a lot tougher yeah. You know, George College. Well, I think the the maximizing of the resources, and, and and I just love this. I love the all the knowledge that you just talked about that our students get to experience. So when they, as an undergraduate, when I go to graduate school, boy, am I really ahead of the game? Absolutely. You know, and uh, uh, and as a, as a graduate assistant, then then when I go into to get a, a, my first full time job, I mean, I'm really ahead of the game. Yeah, and you know, the the in the end. When you go to college, what is the, the end goal really? I mean, obviously you want to be a more cultured, well-rounded right, right. individual, but the real goal is to get a job. Right, right. So we're giving them actual yeah. hands-on skills that will apply in the real world. Talk about that, maybe about some of your graduates and some of the things that they're doing, sure. some of the lines of work and that type of thing. Yeah, um, you know, I've got graduate students that are all over the country yeah. now. Um, I, you know, I've got a couple that are out in Dallas that work at the Cooper Institute okay, right. that are personal trainers, um, doing very well. Yeah. Uh, I've got another uh, student that was actually with the San Diego Padres organization, but now came back to work on his PhD. Okay. And he was one of my graduate assistants. Right. Okay. So, yeah. um, and then I have other students that have actually gone on and are working with professional teams, others with, with college teams. Right. Um, and some that are actually have gone into actually opening their own businesses right. okay. and have their own human performance centers now. Well, that's one thing I feel like, again, coming up through coaching myself, uh, and I studied this in my undergraduate and graduate major as well, but I didn't know that as it's, as it's gotten way more advanced over the last 20 years. Yeah. What exactly we're doing, why we're doing it, and, you know, when to peak and all those types of things. And sure. To have that access to where, where, where I, I, I tell our coaches now, all you have to do now is coach. Let 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 our professionals worry about getting them ready to do all the resistance training and healthy right. performance things because that's what they know about. Yeah, and I mean, you know, now all professional teams and college yeah. teams at the Division One level have strength coaches and assistant strength right. coaches. Yeah. They have staffs. Yeah. I mean, actually, in class last night in our graduate design class, we design a team of human performance professionals. And, you know, it, it's kind of a learning process for them, but we had 36 people on that team. Right. Now, Division One schools, professional teams, guess what? They have it. It goes anywhere from an orthopedist all the way yeah. down to, you know, the equipment manager. Yeah. But then what we do as part of the assignment is to actually 
you know, take a step back and say, okay, how can we actually utilize our resources more effectively? Right. Meaning, we can have access to all these people. Who can we get that can actually be volunteers? You know, and, and that's what we do, and it teaches them about it. Yeah. So if they go on to Division Three, Division Two, or Division One, or a professional team, they know what they have to deal right. with. I want to switch gears again as we, we kind of close out. Tell us a little bit about your coaching experience and all your world travels. That's, that's neat. It had to be a fun time for you. It was. Yeah. Um, it was definitely a unique opportunity. Um, I've gotten to travel the world. Yeah. I mean, I'm very blessed from that perspective to be able to say, you know, I've been to Russia. I've been, you know, yeah. all, I, I mean, everywhere, Cuba even, yeah. you know. And I went for another country, actually. I okay. went as a, a national team coach for Ecuador. Okay. Because uh, we had coached uh, a young man that actually uh, went to school and had a full ride at Florida State. And then, um, you know, they asked me because I had worked with them here in the U.S. and said, you know, would you be willing to, to coach? And the thing is, I had gotten to travel even when I was an athlete and train in Ecuador. We did altitude training. Yeah. And that's actually what I did my dissertation on. But uh, it gave me the opportunity. And then from there, I just slowly, all the way from Furman where I was right. an athlete, and then I was working with the, the coaching from the strength and conditioning then led me into the sports specific side of it. And then I started coaching swimmers, okay. you know, and the yeah. next thing you know, I was coaching Olympians and. Right. Know, yeah. So. Well, neat. And you're still involved with swimming to, Absolutely. to this day. Absolutely. My, my yeah. two sons, Michael and Mark still yeah. swim. Um, my son, Michael just swam in the GISA state okay. meet. Yeah. He was a freshman, had to swim against all the upperclassmen. Okay. But uh, he uh, <laughs> actually did PRs. He got two thirds and a fourth. So I was pretty happy. Yeah. One of the kids that beat him in the 50 free got a full ride to Georgia tech. Okay. So. Yeah. Right. We'll see how he does in the next couple of years. And speaking of swimming, maybe if, if our folks haven't seen it, tell us about, uh, talk about our wellness center and the, the facility that we have sure. from, the, from the swimming. Yeah, we, Unbelievable. We, yeah, we created a state-of-the-art wellness yeah. center here on campus. I mean, it, it, it's for the students and community yeah. members can actually have access yeah. to it too. But the pool really is yeah. cutting edge. Um, it, it, is, it is a nice competition pool, um, but it's also used for anywhere from – Basic swim lessons, people yeah. can use it to, you know, elderly getting in there and doing water aerobics just to lap swimming and, you know, triathlons are becoming more popular. Right. So, you know, that's really added, a, you know, something extra to our campus. And e even with that, as you talk about, the, I'm, I'm just thinking of the, uh, the buoyancy and, and, and water aerobics, things like that. Going back to the very basic movement, uh, which is, which is uh, as we've talked about through this whole process of, Really, just fundamentals and, and yep. understanding those, and, and uh, but it's it, it's it, I'm really glad that this has all come back around, and it seems like there's just it's just going further and further and further. More it advanced. is. I mean, we step back to look into the future, yeah, and then that guides us. And yeah. now we see, and now what we do is we use our science, and our science actually leads us to better performance. Yeah. Well, we're seeing that. I tell you, Mike, great conversation today. Really enjoyed it. So uh, appreciate uh, it. Yeah, let's, I love talking about health and human performance, and uh, so. For Mike Martino, I'm Wendell Staten. Thanks for joining us on GC Conversations. Mm -hmm.